Y'all, I just finished, I literally just finished my front porch. That's why I look like the Hot Mess Express right now. But in today's video, I'm sharing five easy and affordable ways to update your front porch decor and get it ready for fall. Even though it's a tad warm here in Texas, it's still a great time to do some DIYs. And if you're looking to update your space, this video is for you. On this channel, I love to share DIYs and budget home decor. And if we haven't met yet, my name is Lisa and this is Our Gray House. I mentioned in my intro that I'm going to be doing some DIYs and refreshing my front porch, but I wanted to show you how it looks first. This is how the front of my house looked before we did the refresh. No, I don't have any landscaping. Yes, I need help in that area. So if you can help, let me know. But anyway, that's a story for another day. So I have pillows on the bench and on the chairs. And then on the right, I have the It's a Beautiful Day, Fred Rogers quote. And on the left, I have the Life is Better on the Porch sign. And on my front door, I just have my grapevine wreath with lamb's ear around it and then a little sign in the middle that says hello and honestly the first part of the project is to try to clean everything and you know remove all the pillows so i can change everything out what i really need to do is power wash i don't have time to do that right now um and i won't have time the next couple of weeks and i want to get it decorated so it is what it is also i live near a fire station <laughs> I've got some more cleaning to do, but let's do some DIYs. For DIY number one, I'm taking three of these long signs that you can get from Dollar Tree. I obviously got them around for the July because they have stars. They have ones with pumpkins and all that kind of stuff, but you're gonna take everything off of the sign. And because I didn't need the little star on the end, I'll take my little square ruler thing and I mark off where I'm gonna just need to cut the boards. The boards are a little too thin to actually glue together, so I'm taking some paint sticks and I'm putting some wood glue on there and I'm gluing those to the back of the three signs to kind of glue them together. And here I'm taking some terracotta paint. I've had this paint for, I don't know, a billion years. Anyway, I'm gonna paint this sign with this terracotta paint. And let me tell you another thing about the terracotta paint that I'm using. It doesn't, it covers, but it doesn't cover well. It's splotchy, it's hard for me to get an even coat. And I don't know if it's something that I'm doing with this particular paint, but it's happened to me several times. I mean, it works out okay, but I'm just saying, use a different kind of paint. <laughs> I cut out a decal using my Cricut. Now I got the inspiration from Whiskey and Wit, who got the inspiration from Kirkland's. I changed mine up just a bit. And well, now I have captain's help, so you know all is gonna be well in my world. One thing that I do if I have an intricate piece with a lot of like letters and stuff like that, I take my slicer, and you can get those on Amazon, and I slice the vinyl so that it comes off in sections. You'll kind of see me do it in a second. I just find that it's easier because sometimes the vinyl sticks to itself and then messes up your decal, and that's just a whole thing. So we don't want that. <laughs> Now I'm taking these paint sticks. They're not paint sticks. That's that wood that I got from Lowe's. The common, no, the general wood piece or whatever. Anyways, um, I'm taking that and I'm staining with Waverly Wax in the color Antique. And this is going to be my frame. To attach the frame, I'm just going to hot glue it on. And I have already set the pieces down so I can make sure that everything is fitting like I want. And then I'm hot gluing the top and then the bottom. And then I'll glue the sides. It's time to apply the decal and y'all know I'm not super fussy about it but one thing that I did with this one because it was big and I didn't want it wiggling around is I took off that top section like you see there and now I'm just going to kind of pull back and then I can just kind of press down the see see how I did that I think I don't know I just think that was easier for me some of the vinyl did stick to you know the paper but um, I got it all off and then it just made it a lot easier for me to transfer it onto the sign. And this is how my fall essentials sign turned out. I have it on one of the screen doors on my front porch and you'll see it in the final reveal in just a little bit. Here's a quick break to share Crafty DIYs on a Budget, which is the Facebook crafting group that I run with my friend Sarah from Jujube DIY. And folks in there share lots of their projects and things that they're working on. And it's just always fun to see everyone's creativity in action. And if you'd like to join, the link is going to be in the description box below. Socks is making an appearance. This is DIY number two, and it's not really a DIY per se, but it's what I do. So. I had all this greenery on my grapevine wreath and 
now I've taken it all off. I got the wreath at Hobby Lobby. They're very inexpensive. It was less than 10 bucks. And I'm taking a bunch of floral picks from Dollar Tree and I'm just gonna be sticking them in to the, um, the wreath. So I'm just kind of sorting what I want and what I don't wanna use. I don't hot glue down any of the florals or anything that I put on my wreath because I like to use this wreath season after season, year after year. And if it gets too, you know, raggedy looking, I can always go get another one from Hobby Lobby, but I'm just poking the florals in and kind of weaving them into the stem, uh, the grapevine wreath a little bit. And if you've ever had one, you kind of know there's like little pockets you can tuck those floral stems into. But I find this works best for me because again, I don't want to store, you know, 20 wreaths in my house because um, I just, I don't want to. And so my solution to that is to have a grapevine wreath that I just change out the little decor pieces. DIY number three goes hand in hand with the one I just showed you. This is gonna be a little, this is a whiskey and wit inspired project. And I've taken this circle round that I got from Dollar Tree and I'm painting the lower half with that same terracotta color that I didn't really like from the first DIY. <laughs> it works a little bit better in a smaller space, I guess, but yeah, anyways. I did the reveal, but I, you know, where I pull back the tape and you see that crisp line, I didn't show it. So I'm just reapplying the tape and then I'm staining the other half of the circle with Waverly Wax in the color Antique. I did want to show you this reveal because when I pull back the tape, I see that I didn't place the painter's tape correctly. You see that little white spot right there? All you have to do is just reapply your painter's tape and then I just added a little bit more Waverly Wax to fix it. Now it's time to put on the decal. Again, this is Whiskey and Wit inspired. She got this decal from Cricut. So um, I used the same one as she did. I'm gonna link her video down below so you can see how hers turned out and what she did with hers. And of course I'm using my Expressions Vinyl Paper Transfer Tape and it does not pull up the paint when you pull it back to reveal the decal. The decal that I used, I didn't size it correctly, so it kind of hung over a little bit, and I'm just trimming it with some scissors. I was on the struggle bus a little bit with this decal, trying to place it exactly where I wanted it, so finally got it where I wanted it, and then of course pull it back and reveal the Hello Fall words. Now I have Captain's help for this one, and you're seeing another DIY in the background there, but yeah, just make yourself comfortable, Captain. So I am making an awareness ribbon bow. You just make an awareness ribbon that kind of pinch in the center and I'm dovetailing the ends there and that's about it. It's really a simple one. I'm taking some floral picks. It's actually the ones that were in the grapevine wreath earlier, Captain's still helping, and I'm hot gluing down that little bow that I made and then I'm gonna put two pieces of lamb's ear on each side of the bow. One thing to keep in mind is I am not a floral designer by any means. I just kind of stick them in there until I think it looks good. Anyway, one thing I was going to tell you guys, I got these from the Dollar Tree and while well, they're only $1.25, these little things, the petals and stuff, they fall off. They're pretty flimsy. So just keep that in mind. I don't always, I'm not always able to use or reuse Dollar Tree florals season after season. It just depends on where they are and um but these are going to be outside so i don't know but anyway here i'm just adding a few little pieces in some spots that i thought needed some more pieces <laughs> when i start working on what i want to do for the front porch i'm sorry there's going to be traffic <laughs> this whole video because i live by two really busy streets anyway so when i start thinking about how i want the front porch to look I have to keep in mind that I can't put too many small things or things that will easily blow away because if we have a storm here, and we do um, have storms often, if we have a storm here, then it just, it gets, you know, blown away and I have to either bring it inside or, or something like that. So for example, um, I had made these little pillows out of placemats from Dollar Tree and they looked super cute and added a little pop of color on the porch, but anytime it was windy, they would start rolling down the street. So. I don't want to be chasing pillows or little decor pieces like that. So I just try to keep that in mind. So I stick those in. I don't hot glue them in because I like to use this grapevine wreath year round and just change out the florals and the decor for the season. So 
that being said, I um, if it's if they're not stuck in good, I have to bring the wreath in if it gets too windy outside. Here's a sign that I made, and to hang it up, I normally would just hot glue the um, jute twine to the back, but it actually the sign already had little holes in it, so I'm just going to kind of measure how long it's going to hang, and then I'll just put the little hole uh, the twine into the hole, knot it up, and then I'll hang it from there. And this is how DIY number two and three look together. I think, okay, personally, I think it's a little busy, <laughs> but I do like all the color. I do like the rich colors that's in there. I love how the Hello Fall sign turned out, and let me know what you think in the comments below. DIY number four is going to be a no-stitch envelope style pillow cover, and I got the fabric from Hobby Lobby, and I'm using liquid stitch to do it. This is gonna be an 18 by 18 pillow, so I have two panels that are 13 by 18 and one panel that's 18 by 18. And this is one of the smaller panels. I am just stitching up one edge. If you're using a patterned material like I am, you do have to be careful which end you are stitching up, but this is another one of the 13 by 18 panels, and I'm hemming up with liquid stitch one end. And you need to press down the glue to make sure that it's, you know, getting where you need it to be. And if the glue oozes out, just take a little wipey and wipe up that area. I let the two smaller panels dry for just a little bit before I do this next step. So I have the 18 by 18 panel on the bottom. And as you can see, it does have a specific pattern. So you just got to be careful you're matching stuff up. And I'm adding liquid stitch there. And I'm adding one panel raw edge on the bottom and that folded edge is on the top. You can kind of see it there. And then you open the panel up and put a little glue here. This is a Farm Charm Chic. Emily did, showed how to do a pillow. I'm gonna link her video below because she takes time and she explains it all. And yeah, I mean, I might do a separate video too because it was really a good tutorial, but basically she's got a great tutorial, go watch it you're doing the sides of the panel. She explains it and she does it very slowly or slower than what I'm doing it. You take that other panel, again, raw edge on the bottom there, and you're gonna repeat the same process, gluing the bottom down first, and then gluing one side up, and then gluing the other side up. See, and it gets a little messy sometimes. But the cool thing about this is you can reuse this and the liquid stitch is really, really very sturdy. I was tugging and pulling at the pills, you'll see in a minute, but I was tugging and pulling at them and nothing, none of the stitches came loose or anything. Now flip them inside out or right side out, I guess would be the proper term. And you can kind of see it coming together. If those corners don't want to pop out, you can use like the end of a paintbrush or something like that to pop them out. And then here I am stuffing this pillow. And this is a this is not a squishy pillow. <laughs> this is a pretty firm pillow. And I'm stuffing it in and nothing ripped, nothing tore. So I was pretty happy about that. There you go. And this is how they look on the church pew that I have. I like how it pops against that orange, but those orange pillows, um, you can't really tell they're orange. Those look like, like a weird yellow. Anyway, those are being changed out, but that's how they look right now, and I just love the pop. If you like the things that I'm creating in today's video, be sure and like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget, there's other videos you can check out on my channel after you're done watching this one. Looks like we're at DIY number five. So I'm making another sign and I'm doing the same thing that I did before, but I forgot to show you on the other one. I added some popsicle sticks along the seams to just kind of reinforce it and hope it, hopefully make it a little more stable. And then I'm using some wood glue and then in between where the wood glue is, I'm using hot glue for a more immediate hold and then just pressing those down. And I'm putting the big paint stir sticks down first so that I can space those um, popsicle sticks better. And I am giving the front of the sign a good coat of Rust-Oleum's Chalked Ultramat Paint. Rust-Oleum's Ultramat Paint, Chalked Paint. I don't know, it's Rust-Oleum Paint in the color charcoal that I use all the time and I can't remember the name of it. <laughs> We're gonna add the decal now and again, I'm trying to 
I've got it positioned where I want, so I'm taking away some of that backing and then pressing it down. I just find it, it makes it a little bit easier for me to kind of lay it where I want and I get less bubbles and stuff. I didn't show it, but I, I cut down these, that general board again. I don't know what it's called. I can't remember. You'd think I'd remember. Anyways, my husband said it was just like a stick. And I'm like, I can't go into Lowe's and ask for a stick. Anyway, <laughs> I need to know what the board is called. So I know where I can find it. I don't have to worry about the name. I stained it with Waverly Wax in the color Antique and fitted it around the frame. And you can just see me hot gluing it down. And this is how it turned out. And all at once, summer collapsed into fall. It is an Oscar Wilde quote. I probably should have put Oscar Wilde in the corner. Maybe I'll go back and do that, you know. But I just kind of liked the quote and I thought it was appropriate for the season. All right, y'all. Uh, this little wood scarecrow right here, my dad made that. It's a reversible sign on the opposite side is a snowman. There's um, those two pillows that I made and of course the and all at once summer collapsed into fall sign that I just made as well. One thing that I'm going to change is the pillow covers. I think I mentioned it earlier, but they're just like too bright. They're not orangey enough. I mean, they're orange-ish, but just not orangey enough for me. So I'm gonna look online and see if I have that. And also I wanna put something in the corner here, maybe some corn stalks or something. I'm not sure, I'll have to go check at Lowe's and see what they have. All right, y'all, this is my favorite part. I love the wreath, the grapevine wreath with all the florals in it. And I love the little centerpiece that I put in there, the hello fall sign. Uh, this sign over here is another reversible sign. This sign says, this side says fall, the opposite side says snow. My dad made that as well. And my dad's very handy and crafty too. This is that milk jug and normally I have it flipped so you can't see the welcome to our pumpkin patch, but I added some Dollar Tree florals to that to kind of give it a pop of color. And then of course, just my regular mat that I have out front all the time. Here's this side of the porch. I think it looks super cute too. My fall essential sign, I like how it pops off of there. But again, I'm gonna change out the color of these two pillowcases because they're just too, not, they're not orange, orange. <laughs> I want them to be like orange darker orange so but other than that I think it looks super cute oh and I do want to put a little something in the middle on the table there I haven't decided yet what I'm gonna look at what videos I have coming up and see if I'm going to be creating anything that would fit into this space and this is how the front of my house looks now I love all the pops of color but as I'm looking at it the sign on the left the fall essential sign the screen door is kind of crooked and so <laughs> I just noticed that anyway I'll fix that and it again as I said those orange pillow covers are being changed out I've just got to wait for my Amazon order and I've got a few other things that I like to put out there but I love how it turns out and let me know what you think in the comments below Thanks for joining me today. I hope today's video inspired you. And if you decorate your front porch for fall, please tag me in your photos on Instagram and on TikTok and wherever else you're posting it because I would love to see and celebrate your creativity. Here are some other videos that you might enjoy. And if you wanna follow me on social media, like here on YouTube or TikTok, Instagram, my handle is Our Gray House, but just don't follow me in real life though, because that's creepy. Bye.